Hello and welcome to this continuing live code series on creating a website with Python, Django, and the Wagtail CMS. We're going to take a step back. We're working on a project for a nonprofit organization called Western Friend. And right now we're working on this community directory. Uh, we've made some pretty good progress and things are working uh, out. Um, sort of in a way that, that's desired. So we're basically, this is a live website and we're kind of porting it over from Drupal to Django. And what we're building is this whole section of the side, which is several apps sort of rolled into one community app. Uh, we have directories of organizations, nonprofit uh, organizations and um, sort of these large gatherings as well as some media and an events calendar uh, and then this live chat room which we don't have to implement all of it in Django um, but at least have some HTML blocks that uh, can link to arbitrary locations or pages so the situation right now is that this community page is listing contact objects. And we have this general concept that a contact is any person or organization who has some way uh, come into contact with Western Friend influenced uh, the organization or um, published you know, articles or etc. with Western Friend. The first um, time I tried modeling this contact, I tried using uh, the Wagtail page model because almost every single one of our other models, you know, we're in the Wagtail CMS for uh, many reasons, but mainly because it uh, gives you a really nice developer experience and a nice editor experience. And most of all, our other models are inheriting this Wagtail page model which does a lot for us, including inheriting from these index and clusterable model and an abstract page class. So what I've done here is by not inheriting from the page model was losing some of the, the uh, additional benefits that are baked into page. And the crux of the issue was that every page has to have a title. But not all, our contact model doesn't necessarily have titles because they can be people or organizations. And, you know, the title of a person doesn't mean the same thing as the title of a page. But when you, when you, so we'll have to cross that bridge with the title field semantics. But anyway, um, when you align with Wagtail, like I say, it's giving you a bunch of stuff out of the box, including like this quick link explorer to edit the page directly, um, some other metadata, auto-generating page slugs and things like that. Uh, and that was actually the, the deal breaker at the time I was trying the first implementation since um, this slug is actually auto-generated from this title field. And since our model didn't have a title at the time of creation, because I was hiding it, um, we were getting val form validation errors, and I couldn't figure out a way around that. So today, uh, I'm going to try a recipe, how to hide and auto-populate the title field of a page in Wagtail CMS. I think if I'm able to get through this tutorial, and it's going to involve a little bit of JavaScript, where is that? Down here, which I'll have to actually, uh, I can't just copy verbatim because they're using different fields. Uh, if I can get through this, though, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. Everything will be pages, uh, so we'll continue. Uh, our models will be consistent across the board. You know, um, with, when you do wagtail pages, it'll automatically generate routes for you and things like that. Uh, I don't know what else it does. It has like a publishing workflow. Um, maybe some things are more than we need, but. A little search engine optimization, you know, that's pretty cool here. 
who knows? We probably won't need all all these features, but you know, it adds it to search index. So I just want to stick with uh, Wagtail's internal things because it's a very well designed CMS. So today I'm probably going to end up struggling through migrations, but let's go ahead and try it out. So the first thing is just to change the contact model to be a page. Ah, and then I'll have to actually import the page. Environment. It's open because I just hopped over there to take a look at the uh, at the page model. Here it is. So I'll just grab our import right here from Wagtail Core Models. Import page. I'm going to type that out so I can get a little more muscle memory on there. Ah, it's already there. Okay, so don't need to type it out. Okay, so right away, we get a conflict because I had to auto gen, uh, I had to define the slug field. And so I need to roll that back. We may or may not need this description field. I'll have to come back to that. That was a decision uh, relating to the fact that we want to display a small snippet of text under each of these. Uh, description may not be generally applicable to contacts, though, so it might not be the best place to put it here. But that's not a big deal. Uh, we did decide that it's okay to have a given name, family name, for all contact types, even though organizations don't typically have given name or family names. Although, we're using the given name as the organization name in, in this case. And the full name is calculated field concaten concatenation of these two fields. That might be mm, might not be the best way of going forward either. But we needed to. Uh, we can maybe use the title field if I can get this page thing to work. figured out. I do want the database table to be contact. I might be able to run string trim on this. That way if there is a given name but no family name it will trim it. So essentially what we do in this tutorial, uh, I can't follow it exactly because their context is different. They're doing something with snippets, but we have just a, a page model with the fields, right? So that's all good to go. Now the key here is that you define your content panels. You don't inherit the page, which I've actually done in the past. For some reason I was getting some funny business. I believe it's that this promote tab is always going to be there regardless. For some reason, it wouldn't go away. Now we override the save method and set the title from oops, the other values. So this is basically going to be title. And we'll strip. That I think hopefully black will huh, surprise black didn't catch that. So basically what I want to do is clean the white space. So we're going to save, we're going to generate the title by combining these two fields. Uh, let's 
So some of these are actually a little redundant also, I believe, because the page model will automatically generate this string method for us. This looks like it was a typo. And our contacts can be hierarchical. This is going to be an important one coming down the road in a little bit. Uh, welcome. We've got two viewers in the chat room. I am keeping an eye on the chat, so I will look for your any questions or comments that you raise. I've got it pretty much in the middle of my screen, so I'll try to respond quickly. It would be interesting to know uh, what kind of projects you all are working on, if you're doing Python stuff, or if you're interested in Django, or web development in general, general or what your interests are. I might be able to schedule some uh, coding sessions around those types of interests. Okay, so looking like we're pretty good here. I'm going to leave most of these in. Let's give a name. And notice that we're using these. Give a name for the organization name. All right, good. So slug and contact so I'm not gonna have to probably reset my database something like that generate these migrations so let's see if it'll work this is gonna be the painful part so bear with me a non normal field page picture yeah I got this before This one I didn't wasn't ever able to make sense of. Page PTR. Whoops, wrong one. If I run over to this page model real quick, I'm just gonna check what page PTR, see if I can make sense of it. Parent links PTR. I'm not sure where that's coming from. It could be coming from the clusterable model or... I bet actually that's where it's coming from. Where's the... Just take a look ah, Heck, I don't know. So what I'm thinking... Should just delete the migrations from this folder. I am on a branch, so move this to trash. So I shouldn't have to generate that, and I'll reset the database. bugging out. Looks like my ID is bugging out. There we go. All right. <laughs> it didn't automatically activate environment. There we go. Ah, uh, we know. Manage Pi. Good work. Except for migration queen. Oh, yeah, at this, this one. not that big of a deal, but I just have migration spanning across several features, so I have to kind of so the community migrations depending on the contact migration. I can either squash them, and if anybody's got some Django 
experience, it would be, uh, I'd appreciate some um, advice on what to do when I need to just like switch branch and do some destructive changes to my models. And I get ambiguous errors. Since this um, project is really a prototype at this point, I'm not really concerned about uh, migrations. In fact, I could do without the migrations almost. So to auto 259. So it's this one I gotta basically blast all these, and then there's gonna be interdependencies. Okay, well, let's see how, how far back I gotta go. Move those to trash. Library. Not a big deal. At least my migration files will be small. Magazine. I think these are not the order I develop these features in, but I've I've done this process of like basically destroying my migrations. At least once before. There we go. So WAG tokens with a lot of um, batteries included, as does Django in general. So we're going to uh, use the Django to create an admin. Really super secret password. changed. See, these are even getting mixed into the wagtail core. <laughs> strange, strange stuff. Import that. Uh, to the method. This is why I don't like showing that kind of stuff on stream. Freaking advertisements and such.
So that'll return full name, and if this is undefined, it'll just clean it up. Now we have to go into the JavaScript part, I believe, if I have to actually reset the database and everything. We don't have any contact, content. All right. And I had been working on these upgrades in a different branch. So I had merged that. Oh, must not have merged it yet. Okay. Yeah, there's some good stuff going on. Wagtail's in a really active development. I mean, I've opened some support requests and bug requests, and they get have been taken up pretty quick. Sometimes they get closed as, like, maybe not f for Wagtail, but... Uh, Okay, we rich text editors were marked and I never really knew that. Keyboard shortcuts. You can just see that there's a lot going on with Wagtail. So pretty nice. And Django 2.2 support, that's pretty cool. So on a different uh, live stream, I'll probably try to upgrade these dependencies, keep it up, keep it up with security and features. All right, so we have this generic page. I'm gonna add a new page. Out of that page. Hmm. I need to figure that out later, but in any case, let's just create the home page. with multi-site out of the box, which is really cool. Uh, did I not notice a validation error or something? Damn it. Huh, that's weird. Why isn't it there? There it is. Setting sites, localhost, choose different root page. Okay. So now if I go to the front page, essentially, oops, that just makes it the landing page. <clears throat> and I had to do the home page so that our navigation menu and whatnot works. Uh, I'll figure out a different way to make this the root page, but okay. So this, anything, anytime you have something inheriting the Wagtail page model, you get this little navigation menu down here. Hop to the uh, admin for free. No JavaScript or any template markup necessary. Cool. A little bit of chai tea. So essentially, our contacts now. That's how I can get to it, okay. So every one of the main section pages, at least, every one of those has an intro text. Just want to delete this. Yeah, delete it. Ah, 
sound there. Oh, schnuckies. Did that just uh, delete my... Yeah, sure enough. My home page. Wow, that's kind of dangerous. It deletes the whole tree. Or that whole branch of the tree. That can be really bad. All right, cool. Now we're at the root. Let me just double check my settings for the site. I don't have a site, so I might not need it. Let me double check what it looks like. Nope. Doesn't have anything rendered. So, yeah. Localhost. Damn, it even deletes the uh, site if you delete the root page. So, I want this to catch everything. Alright, so we're back to the contact. Contacts can be created. I believe they should only be created under the community section. We'll have to think about it. And it's asking me that right away. No, oh, no, it didn't ask me that this time. So this is work we obviously have done previously. What we ended up doing is hard coding these contact types. Uh, after getting some advice from the Wagtail core, they said, yeah, use your, you know, your model, your ORM to model your content uh, rather than the UI. Okay, so here we go. Here's the validation error. Uh, the promote tab, the slug is not being auto-generated. Let me just check one more thing. When the page first renders, the promote page also is there. So. Those just don't go away anyway. So here comes the JavaScript. I gotta take a peek at the markup, the page markup. Let me know if this text is legible or if you have any troubles reading, I can increase the font size and contrast. But what I'm looking for is, so each of these fields has a name. Uh, I'm gonna have to attach some listeners to the given name and family name fields. try to make this JavaScript as um, legible as possible. But essentially, so what we've got is on save, you have to set the title field. So we've, we've completed this. Now we're at this, adding the JavaScript. So this is why I can't really um, copy and paste this. I'm not exactly sure what they're meaning here. But I believe I will need this. And this is where this will differ. So I guess when you start filling in the field, you need to check the current field and see if it differs. Um, we'll find out what is clean for slug method is defined or how it gets into the uh, scope. But I think it's just something that's inherited uh, part of the, uh, the Wagtail JavaScript. quite a lot JavaScript to render this page. I think they're using React and a few other libraries, it looks like. So this article recommends that you put this into a static JS. I'll have to call it contact slug. JS.
All right, auto populate the slug for the contact. Maybe that means slug matches. Wow. Slug follows title. Okay, essentially what they're checking is that the current slug matches the title and by default the assumption is it doesn't. Uh, so, can you? Let's see, I need to assign this to listener to multiple fields. So I want to just put a, uh, define the callback function. for one second uh, how I can do this so my code's not all over the place. I'll define the function separately. But these are both different. I'm not sure why we need to do it on focus. And jQuery, can you pass the, uh, can you pass multiple? Yeah, I said, suppose look, if you query anything matching here, this event will be passed or attached to those items. Set. So what do we got here? But what I want to do is see if I can pass in uh, two uh, IDs. Brilliant. I'm not convinced that we have to do this on the focus. Slug should only follow the title field if its value matched the title's value at the time of focus. I'm just going to try it on change. And our selectors. Our name is family name. Okay, yeah. Look at ID, family name. ID given name. Yeah, it doesn't matter. If 
values and method or where's it val let's see if this even works all right now we need to make sure this gets compiled and loaded in the wagtails ui create wagtail hooks pi in our django app So we're in our contact. We already have white hooks pi. I hope all this still works. This I didn't even check. Hooks register insert this I'm gonna kind of copy and paste. Hooks. So actually Wagtail contrib, Wagtail, Wagtail core. Well, Alphabetizing it. What do we need settings for? Okay, so we can get this static from here. For my HTML join. Yeah, I would never have figured this out. I was really left scratching my head. So I'm hoping this works out. Insert editor JS. Namespace this. Probably not. Oh, 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 oh. Now I see what they're doing. They're putting the static in the correct app. That's a good idea. I didn't even catch that. Just gonna, I hope it's going to organize it and put that app name JS in front of it. And then we'll have to collect static, I'm sure. This was published on February 20th, and it's already it's missing some key details, I think. Those are advertisements. Good grief.
hard. Just had to opt into some junk from discourse. Just I don't know why people just. Uh, anyway, I don't want to get on a rant, but the internet is kind of getting just really polluted with this kind of crap. Uh, but okay, so they've got that. I believe I have to collect static. Let's see if that works. Yeah, we're back in. Mind. Check it out the network contact slope four oh four. Static contact JS contact slug. Static JS contact slug. JS. All right, so that didn't work. All right, how do we, how do we check out the, uh, anybody who's more comfortable with jQuery, uh, <laughs> I'd appreciate any kind of feedback you can offer here, but basically, Is my selector cor correct? This I should be able to test in the console. Yeah, it's got two of them. Boom, boom. So that's good. change event when does it fire when I leave it I'll change it that worked this valid method uh, value a little bit of guys work here oops I think that worked though. Let's see. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Just refresh. Okay, right, so. If I load this, I can just look at the. I can inspect it. First element. Oh, that's right.
So I'm kind of saying to do them separately. Mm. At least to find the function in the parent scope so it gets reused. All right. Not sure what I'm doing wrong here. All right, so I can just use native JavaScript APIs. But then I have to worry about this compatibility matrix. This should work across platforms. career here so I'm just going to use it but none of these uh, here we go seems like a basic thing why this vowel is not working or text First element in a set of matched elements. You can get in set. Well, 
Well, this is essentially what we're after. They run on the key up function. Why did they run the key up twice? Thanks, Rob. Tall guy. Shouldn't you have this value? So, uh, jQuery. I'm not sure why, but yeah, maybe, maybe. It seems like, I mean, I guess I'm not passing anything in this function scope here. Let's see. Yeah, you're right. That's exactly it. Wow. Okay, cool. So on change, uh, so yeah, let's go back to the console. That one was not super obvious, but yeah, good catch. Whoops. On change console log this val. just to read it. Scratchpad. I think there's a browser scratchpad. Pardon my language. So we need to check my input. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, good, good. All right. Yeah, it's easy to get myself confused when doing these types of things. So I'm wondering, I don't think I'll be able to do this, but if I could combine the two selectors, that'd be really good. fired a bunch of times but yes for some reason that second one fires three times the first one fires once <laughs> Thanks, Rob Tile Guy, for helping me figure that one out. So let's go ahead and uh, well, this is a little bit redundant manner, but I have to have wire these uh, listeners up separately, but I'll have a shared method or function.
Um, 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 and I'll have to grab the values for each of those fields. But let me just see if this works. So save, click static. Run server. I don't know if there's a quicker feed back loop when you're doing JavaScript in Django. Reload. I wonder if there's some magic here in the naming convention. Ah, oh, exclamation project. Utsober says, not project, or what, what, what does that mean? Utsober, what do you mean? Like uh, to auto, when I change the static, or, or like the JavaScript, it'll auto generate, or what do you mean? Do I run and where do I run that in? I don't quite follow. Like, I don't think this will work. That's not what you mean, right? Yeah, I don't think so. Well, okay, just let me figure out. Okay, yeah, that's that makes sense. Uh, I'm working on it's in the lower hand cor right hand corner of the screen, but hey, we're open source on GitHub. Uh, yeah, if you got a recommendation for a bot, I'll uh, try to get one installed on the channel. I was working. Uh, let's see what's the name of that Twitch bot. There's an open source Twitch bot I tried. Nightbot, I believe. that one but there's one for open source projects phantom bot yeah I was trying to try out phantom bot uh, it was a little bit buggy and I didn't want to really qu quite spend a lot of time with it but I can try to get that back on the stream next time So it's more interactive. Yeah, I realize that uh, I want to try to get people, you know, excited and engaged with these projects. They're open source, and so definitely the viewers should be part of it. Okay. So anyway, we got this this contact. Uh, Slug JS seems to be loading correctly. If I can just get past this part, maybe I have to. No, that's correct. Uh, when, I, when, I, when I wire up these uh, callbacks, I don't actually call the function, I just pass it the name of uh, the function, I believe. So it does search spell correctly. Uh, 
Hmm. They're saying to actually call it there. That's interesting. Hmm, okay. Well, I mean, it's not that big bad. I think we got to, the JavaScript community uh, needs to lose its sort of like, um, this is not about you, Paddle Ham, Hammond, but uh, when we have this idea like you, anything that's been around for a little bit and matured for a while and been widely adopted is now uh, obsolete. It's really disruptive. That uh, so I didn't invoke it. Up. My uh, Kvexer, um, my assumption, which was probably incorrect, was that I have to actually, I could pass it in and it would invoke it on the event change. But I, it looks like I have to pass in just an, a function here. Oops. Like that. So I guess that's the correct way to wire it up. And actually, part of the reason, well, it's not so much sure. Yeah, front end uh, ecosystem is a mess, and part of it is due to this sort of um, reinvent everything every year mentality that front end developers seem to have uh, really latched onto, and everything more than six to 12 months old is obsolete. It's really ridiculous. Um, jQuery is still a really good library, and we need to kind of stick with things uh, and develop code that lasts, you know, three, five, ten years. It's one of the things I really appreciate about the Python and Django ecosystems and projects is they're designed to last for a while. Uh, you know, they're mature, their batteries included. I can't find a framework in JavaScript, front end or back end, that has a level of maturity and, and batteries included at, at Django or Ruby on Rails. Uh, those types of projects that the you know they get reinvented, they get revitalized, but they don't get abandoned. And there's not as much maybe bike shedding. <laughs> I think that's the problem. We have too much bike shedding. So yeah, I'm getting kind of frustrated with the JavaScript ecosystem, I'm trying to pivot more into Python, but I still got to touch base in JavaScript. I like the language. Okay, so I have to, yeah, I've checked out Happy. It seems pretty interesting. Okay, so Kvexer says, look, you should invoke auto-populate slug for contact, this. Uh, so if I just put that at the end of it, is that what you mean? I don't see they're doing that here. Uh, no. Okay, so for example, window unload. That's why I was just wondering if somehow the wagtail hooks was sort of evaluating that, but yeah, probably not. It's just actually concatenating it into the HTML. Yeah, and I'm not really touching window here. With this self in, self evoked, self invoked, whatever it is, did that work? <laughs> Dollar sign function. I'm on a Nordic keyboard too. That adds some nice confusion to the mix. So then I need that, or I need the closure. Yeah, this auto, this is, yeah. And maybe when I only had one method in here, the wagtail would, this hook would take care of it. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what's going on behind the scenes, to be honest. Whoops. Insert editor JS. All right. So, so basically, I have this closure around a function that self invokes, and the function does some stuff.
Let's be optimistic. Collect static. Yes. Take a sip of tea. Yeah, I mean, it's just JavaScript, right? But it just gives us really nice and consistent APIs across battles. And I think it's going to be around for a little bit longer, too. The, um, there's a lot of projects using jQuery. Even on the recent survey, I think, of um, developer and technologies, jQuery was very high ranked above React. And many you know people are still relying on it. So I appreciate the shift. Um, that React brings about being more declarative about the way data and the UI are bind to, bound together. Uh, whereas, you know, we're doing this all this imperative work here. So yeah, I get it. It's uh, declarative in ways is better than imperative. All right, constantly works, good. And line 16. So it's almost like Yeah, I'm running, I uh, just reinstalled fresh K Ubuntu or Kubuntu. It's really nice. I was using a stock Ubuntu GNOME, uh, and I took this recent release to kind of switch back to Kubuntu. And I noticed, like, this is really anecdotal, but my baseline RAM usage just when the system was running um, in GNOME, please uh, remember, remember this is anecdotal, but it was something like, over a gig, let's just say. And my baseline RAM usage when I boot into a fresh um, K Ubuntu is about four to 600 megs. Now that could have been because I had, you know, a Docker daemon running some other stuff that I had, had been some cruft that had accumulated. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, yeah, it certainly feels a lot better. Paddle, paddle man, do you, what do you run? Oh yeah, great, Kvexer. Debugger, brilliant. <laughs> so I can use a debugger here. Great suggestion, instead of the it worked thing. All right, I'm gonna try it out without that <laughs> business. Yeah, OSX is pretty stable. A lot of people are using it for development, I think, gets the job done. Okay, so yeah, definitely not getting invoked this time. So maybe I just don't need that parentheses at the end of here. Well, maybe that's what I added erroneously. Do it. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Ah, uh, now I have a nice debugger in there. Great suggestion. I appreciate that. I'll have to keep that behind my ear. We are running um, at work. Well, at least the back end team are running serverless in JavaScript. And uh, I don't really do a lot of work with that part of the code. I'm, I'm fortunate being working in Python and SQL and things like that. But uh, the tooling for serverless is really immature, and like the developers, these are very good developers, very smart guys, guys, and um, they have to just do console logs. That's the amount of debugging they can. They can't even. I'm not. They can't even use a debugger statement because you have to like deploy the function. It's just a really sad situation. But it, it, I guess it scales, and that's what why we chose it. Okay, so yeah, I had the extra parentheses. Now we're on. Now we're cooking. So I didn't see this because it hasn't changed. Continue. Yeah. All right. Good. Everything's wired up. Thank you very much for helping me get through those. Uh, Nuances that was a very nuanced code there. 
All right. So essentially, we just want to get these values, and there should be this function now, clean for slug. That's what we're after. And I don't know if there's a way to just check, check out. There it is. How do you check the docs for, for a slug? I mean, for a function. The source for that is there like uh, like in NumPy you can do this or not NumPy but sorry the uh, like IPy notebook you can do that or kind of just it's attached to the window or view so source or inspect the local scope. I'd like it not to be such a black box because I'm curious to see what this function exactly does, but I'm fine knowing that it exists and the second argument is true. So let's just get those values. We know how to do this now. Right? Sanity check. This is one of those issues that uh, Wagtail team are aware of. That you can't define a uh, Wagtail model without this title field. And that means, <laughs> well, if you want to not have a title field and auto-populate it, people have to do some contortions. All right, now we want to concat these fields and trim the white space. Let me think here. So I can just do with an if statement. string though and these need to be vars on python right now good grief yeah i can't remember it. truthiness of empty string So the case is here, given name is required. Family name is optional. Ah, sorry, this needs to go up here. So if given name and family name, String interpolation in uh, JavaScript back ticks, right? And can I use let here? Uh, probably not.
All right, so we have this syntax, I think, and with a little white space in between. All right. So else if. Slug text. Equals give it a name. And we'll just check if slug text text exists. I don't think I need the else here. Uh, because you can't the form won't validate if you don't submit a given name. We just want to make sure it's no longer undefined. Grab it. Now, group ID slug val slug text. Oh, no, no. by name equals clean for slug and I realize I should probably be using camel case because we're in JavaScript land well, I don't know hopefully nobody gets really mad at me there See if this works, then that'll be able to reach over here and just populate that that field. Refreshing that and paused and debugger. Looks like it got to changes. So North Pacific yearly meeting. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Oh man. Oh great. This is awesome. fix but I think this is good I'll call I'll commit these changes I'm wondering if it's ignoring my static directory seems like it's in my git ignore oh that makes sense So we don't want this massive static folder, but we do want static in the app folders. So let me just check out my getignore pattern there. There we go. All right, Kvexer and let's see, yeah, happy, or let's see, Paul, Paddle Haman, that is a really hard name to pronounce, as they use happy on the back end at homes.com, okay. Seems to be working well. 
uh, in KBEX or uh, what, do, what do you all do? Like, do you have any side projects you're working on with JavaScript or just in general Django Python type stuff? Okay, so only ignore root static. Why don't you use names bases for contact slash static? Well, KBEX or contact static contact. So yeah, let me just not commit this and take a look at what KVX are saying. So contact, static, contact. I believe I did try that again. Uh, did I tried it before, I mean, let me do it again. Yeah, I agree the namespacing thing. So um, namespacer honking good idea. Let's do more of those. So in other words, maybe that's what I had. I had put contact here, but it would be here, I believe. Well, I think that was the problem is that it just, when I collected the static, and I looked at it, there it is. It's right there. Static, contact, JS. Thanks for the reminder, KVXer. And I'll just clean up these console logs. I didn't end up, end up using this. I just see that the uh, Quebecer, thanks for the follow. I love Samosas, thanks for the follow also. And NBC, NBCK777, thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate it. All right, so code's looking clean and legible. I don't know if I can use var const type uh, semantics. Uh, I believe like evergreen browsers should support that. Do you all have a recommendation, by the way, on a uh, Twitch bot, or um, should I just keep going with Phantom Bot, trying that out, see if I can get it working? And there's also a VS Code plugin. Uh, I'll get set up for the next stream. Uh, I've had it previously, like I said, I just wiped my computer, and so my VS Code settings are also been reset. But uh, where it's a Twitch highlighter plugin that lets the chat highlight a pl uh, line of code. Shirzoid, thanks for the follow. I really appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you all around. Uh, so, I'll, yeah, I'll get these uh, these interactive things uh, set up more um, in the next couple streams. I don't want to get too elaborate, but basically things that let the um, 
participants, you know, kind of hang out and code along. All right, so this is looking good still. Let's just take a quick look. What did I do here? Yeah, we should check the title field. See how that's working, but I believe I looked at the contacts, you know, just at least at first glance. Full name's not computing anymore. And title's not displaying there. So actually, if this wagtail hooks up, I put that title in. Then we can commit this stuff. Wagtail hooks. I think we're using title now for the list display. There it is. Uh, yeah, a little bit of redundancy, but that'll allow, for example, us to add a contact. I gotta figure this part out. But, uh, person. Yeah, so, you know, it concatenates the two, looks correct, cleans up the white space. Good stuff. I can close the JavaScript console, I think. I'm done with that for now. I don't have an aversion to JavaScript. My other project, several projects actually that I'm working on uh, involve extensive JavaScript. I do prefer Python where possible. Okay. This has been really good. I'm so glad this came together. I was kind of worried. I think we're in a good direction now. Our co collections are much more consistent. They're all inheriting the page model. Uh, that gives us the benefits of Wagtail. Um, many of which I probably don't even know. But consistency is a good, good heuristic. Uh, so this, and is this still working? So like these user meetings. Yeah, some filters are still working. That's one of the examples of Wagtail just giving you stuff out of the box without having to think about it. Whereas the Django admin is kind of for content, not, not for content managers, it's for site administrators and it's for very limited usage. Well, the Wagtail admin is for site and content managers. So it is basically for those classes of users. It gets much more mileage. So I believe we've done what I set out to do here, convert contacts uh, model to page. I fear if I keep, if I go any further, uh, I'm going to get fatigued and start making a lot of mu more mistakes. Uh, and it's good to leave off, you know, with a sense of accomplishment. So the work, you know, doesn't seem tedious or stressful. Let me just take a quick think. If there's anything else You know, by default, page models are hierarchical, so the next thing we're gonna to have to work on is how to uh, uh, 
relate and display these sub pages. Ah, yeah, exactly. I just remembered I need to check the templates. The rendering wasn't working. So when I say uh, any contact, but uh, how do I view a contact? Well, I should go to the front page, firstly. The community page. So I need to create a community page. So I reset the database. I did create a community page. It's got the correct slug. So now I've broken some things that I didn't expect. This could deal with my site configuration. Dang. I don't want to leave off on a bad note. I <laughs> probably need to power through this part. This live link says admin slash pages slash four none, and I'm getting a 404 error, so that's strange. What I could do is try to reset the database. There's no site set up for this location. Oh, yeah, well, I'm not uh, running now. Yeah, pages here will not be accessible until the site is set up. I guess what I should not have done. Or come to think of it, these probably need to be moved underneath the welcome. And then it'll work. Need to be moved on to this welcome site. Yes, this is the one. Now it'll work. There we go. Okay. Boom. So I have to get to know this uh, multi site model. This is quite powerful, but uh, maybe not. Well, maybe we don't need it right off the bat. Will the contacts still work then? Yeah, okay, good. The templates are working, at least getting some information in there. More specific here in the meeting. And don't have the little wagtail guy. Shoot. Well, the other thing I can do is just set up this um, contact or top level entity. But right now it's not associating with this site. Because it's not underneath this welcome. So let's just move them at least under welcome. Damn it. Robin. It's not letting me select welcome.
there's some funniness going on. But so long as it works. Now I should be able to display. No, it's not working because this dang wagtail is not treating it like a wagtail entity. Like a wagtail page. That was the whole point of this rewrite. Man. So maybe there's a uh, missing tag here. It's not importing some JavaScript. I go to the community tag, community page tag. Then the view, the template. And I'm loading Wagtail core tags. So am I there though? This I actually need to clean up. I'm no longer using this, in fact. So this is actually coming from the contact template, contact detail. Ah, uh, there we are. And we don't have images. Okay, so that's what this template helper does. Apparently, it's going to load in some JavaScript. That's what I'm guessing now. Load demo, I actually know. Hmm. Base HTML. Yeah, this is the proof though. I just need to, I'm getting fatigued. I need to go cool on my head. But, uh, so what we did lose here is the description field. That's why it's displaying none here. So one thing not working. And I have to figure out if I want that uh, to be part of the contact model or if uh, I might just add it to this community page. I can add some, some uh, placeholder text fields. If I edit this page, I might have, for example, a multi-select that lets you select three or any number of uh, featured meetings. And then for each meeting, it'll have two fields. One is to page selector and the other is a, a descriptive text. Yeah, I should definitely start that in a second, uh, when I have a second wind. The other thing that's really working me a little bit, I don't really want to leave off on that bad of a foot, uh, but this little wagtail widget is gone. You know, it's not a big deal. Things are basically working, turning the correct template, and I don't have that field anymore. So I can leave well enough alone for tonight. It has been quite an achievement to get this uh, amount of work done. I really do appreciate the help from the chat, helping me get through those um, nuances of the JavaScript and the HTML. So yeah, I don't want to uh, kind of bore you all any further with uh, sort of floundering on this issue. Uh, I will call it good for tonight, commit these last Let's see what I changed here. So clean up and what I change here. This may or may not be necessary. I can roll that back. Until I decide for, for sure it's needed. I'll do a little bit of research. This was just to clean up. I'll push this to GitHub. 
So again, this, uh, this project, we're open source. Uh, we're going to have a few open source things, but this is under the Western Friend. Western Friend website, we're porting over um, from Drupal to Django. Here's today's work, where we converted the contacts from a more or less regular uh, Django model to this enhanced page model. So had to go through and, and kind of repopulate our migrations uh, since I had that hard reset on the, the contact model. And then the bulk of the work was just working through this uh, JavaScript. I had some great feedback and help in the chat registering that JavaScript with the Wagtail admin UI. And uh, that was it, pretty much. So yes, thank you very much uh, for all those who attended. And if you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to give me any questions or comments and I'll respond to those promptly. So this has been a continuation of our Let's Code website from scratch using Python, Django, and Wagtail CMS. Uh, we'll probably be um, working on this more uh, next weekend. So hope to see you all around in the chat. Thanks again and have a great day.